Hello, everyone. Uh, again, it's good to be with you. Uh, these days, Father and I, Father Ralph and I, will be alternating days with a small daily reflection. Uh, and as we did just yesterday, we'll both be posting a, a reflection for Sundays as well. But uh, one will be a video with the Mass, the other will just be another reflection. Uh, so for today's reflection, I wanted to depart a little bit from the, the scripture readings that we have for today um, to a point that I think is very helpful for us these days. Uh, as a priest and as a seminarian, I've had a chance to visit a lot of different monasteries and convents where monks and, and nuns live together. Uh, and it's been such a blessing, you know, when I've gone for retreat or maybe for vacation, just stopping and visiting in these various places. Uh, one, one particular experience I remember well is I went to a place called Holy Hill, a shrine in uh, near Milwaukee, Wisconsin, uh, to a place where they have, they have a convent with Carmelite monks and then this beautiful shrine uh, on the top of a hill in the midst of a bunch of trees uh, dedicated to Our Lady. And one of my experiences I remember, especially from that, is I was just there for vacation. I went up and I can celebrated Mass, their daily Mass there. And afterwards, the monks invited me to join them for their daytime prayer and then also for lunch. And that was just such a beautiful and refreshing experience. We went out of the main body of the church uh, up to a little private chapel where the monks were gathering uh, for daytime prayer and together with uh, five or six other monks that were there, uh, I prayed together with them daytime prayer, uh, part of the Liturgy of the Hours. Um, and it's a beautiful, beautiful prayer. And uh, what I appreciated about that experience and, and also spending time with them for, for lunch was just I felt so refreshed by that opportunity for prayer together with the monks. Uh, as a priest, we continue to pray the liturgy, the hours uh, every day and for f at five different times throughout the day. Um, but some, we don't get the chance always to pray it in common because maybe we're not together with some other priests or maybe our schedules just don't line up very well. So it was a great experience for me to be able to spend some time with these monks uh, and to pray together with them and to worship the Lord together. I just felt so refreshed. And then we had a great lunch. It was a lot of fun. Uh, the monks told some great stories, and uh, it, it was just a, a lot of fun. Um, they're, they're in order, in case you were wondering, that doesn't keep a, a vow of silence necessarily throughout the, the day. Um, some, other, some other orders do that. But in any case, I, that, that moment of prayer was so refreshing. And maybe you're familiar with some other monks or nuns in their communities uh, and how they keep generally a very strict uh, order of the day and different times where different things occur. Uh, a lot of times it's that they start their morning in prayer, uh, even sometimes as early as four o'clock in the morning, uh, and then they pray for an hour, and then they t spend time to work for an hour uh, or to study for an hour, then they go back to pray. So, you know, prayer, a couple hours of another activity, prayer, then a couple hours where maybe they're tending the garden or they're mending the clothes of their community, uh, again, at work for a while, or maybe they're studying, uh, and then they go back to prayer. So their, their day is very much filled with this time for prayer, these little moments for prayer throughout the day that help to sustain them. Uh, it's prayer, then work, then prayer, then work, then prayer, then work, which of course is the, the motto for the Benedictine order, uh, ora et labora, prayer and work. Uh, and a lot of monastic communities follow that same sort of uh, rhythm of, of life. Uh, and I think it's such a beautiful rhythm that maybe is something we can follow these days too. Uh, I think praying throughout the day can sometimes be uh, like this, this kind of an image where maybe somebody is thrown down into the middle of a desert and there's a city uh, many miles this way that they need to get to because that's the only city that's nearby. And so they keep start walking along their way to this nearby city. Um, and just at the moment where they feel like, oh my gosh, I'm exhausted, I, I need some water to drink, then it turns out there's a little oasis there. They go take a drink. Then they go back on their journey, continuing on towards the city many miles away. And just at the point where they feel exhausted and tired and too much, it's like, it's too much to continue on. I'm thirsty. Again, there's another oasis there that they can just drink from and they uh, feel refreshed in order to continue along the journey all the way to the end of, of the city. I think that's what our prayer can be like as we take moments throughout the day to pray. Um, these moments where we feel like exhausted or, or our strength is all spent. Um, if we 
pray, uh, take a little moment to pray at that moment, uh, gives us the strength to continue on throughout the rest of the day. And so maybe it's something that we can learn these days uh, as we're kind of by ourselves and um, we, we very much are almost forced into a sort of monastic way of life. Uh, we're together with a small community, spending a lot of time together. Uh, we have our work to do, uh, whether it be the, the telework that we're doing, or maybe it's the school work that we're, we're supposed to do. Um, and I think it'd be great for us to follow a sort of monastic rhythm, to make our homes kind of like a monastery in a way, uh, where we take time for prayer and then we go to work for a while then we take some more time for prayer go back to work take some time for prayer that's a great way in which during this time we can continue to grow in our relationship with god with the lord and also just to receive his strength for all of those trials and difficulties that come throughout the day so maybe something that we can learn from the monks today and uh, just as a little recommendation, too, uh, if you're curious in kind of getting to know a little bit more what a monastic community is like, like what their life is like, there are a couple little uh, movies out there that you might be check out if you're interested. Uh, one is called Into Great Silence. Uh, it's a documentary of a monastic community. It has a very interesting uh, story uh, the, uh, behind it. Um, that the reporter had requested to come in and film this community and then they're like, oh, we'll pray about it. Then you know, something like 10 years later, then the community gets back to the reporter and says, all right, we're ready. You can, you can film this. Uh, but anyway, it's a, a very interesting look into the life of a monastery. It's called Into Great Silence. Of course, it's a very quiet film. Uh, it's a very slow paced film, but a very interesting one nonetheless. And then there's another movie called Of Gods and Men, which is also a movie about a religious community during a time of religious persecution or, yeah, a religious persecution of a small city. Um, so it's a little more intense, probably not suitable for the whole family, um, but another good one that shows what a monastic community is kind of like. So two in films you might check out, Into Great Silence and Of Gods and Men. Um, but I think the more important thing is just that we can learn from these communities uh, to have a rhythm of life which is punctuated by little times of prayer uh, that help us during these times to continue to grow closer to God and to find strength uh, during our, our daily routine, um, to make it a holy day, to make it a day um, that we give over to the Lord. So uh, God bless you and keep well.